Jessica Brevoort and this is Kitchen Table Productions. Today I'm going to show you three great microwavable snack treats that will satisfy your craving for the crispy and crunchy. Let's get started. Okay, first of all, this is the bottom of my microwave oven. Uh, first thing I need to do is make a little tray out of parchment paper. I'm going to fold each of these sides. Try to get a, an eyeball with the tray to see how I'm doing. And after I get each of these sides folded down, then I'm going to fold my corners. The reason I'm putting these uh, edges on it here is that when we put the cheese, it's going to give off a little fat and we don't want that running out and making a mess. Third corner. And the last. There we go. Now I'm going to take this and put it back in my microwave. And there's the tray. Now the first thing we're going to cook is cheese chips. Now this is cheddar cheese that I got cut in my local grocery supermarket. You can use regular cheese. You can just grate it up or slice it yourself. I like these because they're nice and thin and uniform and uh, they're easy to work with. Now I'll just lay these out. One in each corner. You know, no, I'm not doing many at a time, but that's fine. It needs room to spread out. I'll just put these in my microwave. Maybe the corners won't catch as it turns around. Now I'm going to set this to cook for one minute. There it goes. Now I know that it's not going to take the whole minute. I have to keep an eye on this. Kind of see now how it's starting to bubble. It'll bubble up and spread out a bit. And it'll start to turn a nice dark color. And that's what you're looking for. You're waiting for it to get that nice, nice dark color. And you're going to pull it. And it's going to be probably closer to 40 seconds. At least it is in my microwave. Your microwave, of course, will vary. Microwave ovens do. A little bit longer. It's starting to brown. I can see it on the edges there. There. Perfect. See, this is what they should look like. Nice and brown and golden. Kind of a dark orangey color. These are darn near perfect. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, uh, fat that's come off. We're going to take this and put it on a paper towel that I've set out, and it helps get a little bit more of the grease taken off. That helps to lower the fat content, which isn't bad, because we want to burn our own fat if we can. That's what helps us lose the weight. See all that? Taking out of the cheese. I'm just going to blot this off so I can do my next batch. You'll be able to reuse this little tray many, many times. Keep it nice and clean between batches. Now, here's my finish. It probably should cool a little bit more because when they cool up, they get nice and crisp. There we go. Oh, mmm, that's good. Mmm. <laughs> I'm keeping it in a nice, um, little Tupperware type of thing, just to help uh, keep it fresh. Now here's the pepperonis. You can do the same thing with the pepperoni that you did with the cheese. It will get nice and crispy and be quite, quite tasty. I'll just slide these right in here. There we go. And again for a minute. Now you could do the same thing uh, in a regular oven, set it for about, ooh, 400 or so, I'd say, in about 20, 20 minutes. You can do this with the cheese and the pepperoni. They both work well. Again, I'm looking for that nice darkening of the color. You can see how the pepperonis are kind of uh, warping. They turn into a nice dark color. And I just have to stand here and get ready to pull them. It doesn't take long to cook these. You have to keep an eye on it. There. Beautiful. All 
I'll get another paper towel here. Lay that out. So as you can see, the pepperoni, just like the cheese, threw off a lot of fat, even more so. Pepperoni is kind of famous for this orange oil slick that it can leave on pizzas. Look at all that. I'm just going to wipe this down. I've got one last thing to show you. I want to get this well cleaned off because the next thing I'm cooking is not going to show throw off a lot of oil like the others. So I'm going to get that off so I don't introduce more. Put those in my storage bin. Alright, this is American cheese. Plain old, generic, whatever you like. They're just wrapped ones. Much like the other cheese. Except it's going to do something very, very different. Now what I've got here is a pizza seasonings grinder. You could use anything you've got on hand. Uh, garlic salt, Old Bay, whatever you like. I'm going to press this in. just so that it won't fall off when I transfer it. And now instead of cutting this into quarters like I did for the cheddar, I will cut it into sixteenths all together. So quarter it that way, turn, and quarter again. And one more cut. these out again, spreading them out. I have a friend Jed who'll love this one. He's a big American cheese fan. There we go. And once again, back in the microwave. American cheese acts very, very differently. As you can see here, it's already starting to bubble up. You're going to cook this until it kind of stops bubbling. And it's going to again, just like the others, just start to turn darker. All three of these take about 40 seconds in my microwave. I wouldn't actually cook them together because some take, might take five seconds longer or, you know, four seconds shorter. And it's best to keep these here one type of uh, snack at a time. Stop boiling and now they're starting to darken. A few more bubbles in there, not many. There. Now rather than a flat chip, what we end up with with the American is these nice light fluffy puffs of cheese. Let me pull one of these off of here for you. So you can see it better. little cheese puff. There, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? They all three use the same methodology, but they give very different results. But all three of them will satisfy your craving for the crispy and crunchy. I'm Jessica Brevoort, and this is Kitchen Tip Productions. <laughs>